I'm Julianne Sosa. Uh, I'm a proud and loyal member of the American Thyroid Association. I'm a member of the board of directors of the ATA, and I also faithfully serve on the guidelines committees for both thyroid nodules and differentiated thyroid cancer, as well as hyperthyroidism and thyroid toxicosis. When I'm not working with the ATA, I'm the chief of endocrine surgery at Duke University. I'm an endocrine surgeon and surgical oncologist who leads the endocrine neoplasia diseases group at Duke. Differentiated thyroid cancer is an important public health problem in the United States. Thyroid cancer is the fastest increasing cancer with an incidence that has increased more than 250% in the last two decades. By 2019, it's expected to be the number three cancer in American women. And among American women 35 years of age and younger, it is already the number one cancer. More than 62,000 Americans this year will be diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Typically, thyroid cancer arises from thyroid nodules, and we think that as many as 68% of Americans have a thyroid nodule. This is an important space for the ATA, which is actively supporting research, training, and even last week, marked an important milestone for the ATA with the publication of practice guidelines for thyroid nodules and differentiated thyroid cancer in the United States to hopefully standardize care and improve patient outcomes. Welcome to the American Thyroid Association Differentiated Thyroid Cancer video. You're about to see a physician speak with a patient who has this disease and about his experiences and challenges. Hello, I'm Brian Haugen from the University of Colorado. I'm an endocrinologist, and I'm here with Andy Debevoise to talk about differentiated thyroid cancer, which is a very common uh, type of cancer, both in men and women. Uh, fortunately, most patients are treated uh, with surgery and radioactive iodine, but there are many challenges along the way, and I wanted to talk with Andy a bit about the challenges that uh, he has had in his thyroid cancer journey. So Andy, what challenges or issues have you had uh, dealing with thyroid cancer? I was diagnosed in um, May of this year and uh, had my surgery the first part in June. And part of the surgical process, I had to have my recurrent left laryngeal nerve, well, the words the surgeon sacrificed. And uh, so um, after the surgery, my voice has, has changed. And uh, it's been a challenge to, uh, to adapt to that and deal with that. And actually, it's gotten uh, much better, and I'll be having some further therapy and some things done with that. So that's been part of my, my process and part of the challenges. Pulmonary nodules were detected mm. by CT scan when I had uh, septic, when I went back in, because I had to do a CT scan on my chest. And so, um, because my case and my age and, this, and the nature of my uh, papillary thyroid cancer, um, she thought that uh, she would prefer me to Dr. Smallridge at Mayo for further consultation. I knew nothing about thyroid cancer, but to find out that the papillary was, I guess, if there's such a thing, the preferred variant to have of it, and that the, the treatment was surgery and then radioactive iodine. Um, but the, but the uh, pulmonary nodules throw another twist into it, plus the, uh, as I understand it, the genetic mutation that I, that I have, mm -hmm. the, they are, are resistant to the uh, uptake. Uh, while I'm, um, I'm incredibly grateful for the, uh, the care that I have, both locally and, uh, and at the Mayo, um, uh, it's, it's a journey for me, and the, the next step now will be a few months from now, we'll take another CT scan and see what's going on. And, uh, sure. And uh, so, um, uh, you know, I, I, to be honest, I'm apprehensive. Uh, and what, uh, what concerns do you have about future treatment or, or, or questions or concerns that you have now? Um, well, I wonder, I wonder uh, if I will have to go on uh, the medication, the kinase medications, and the side effects that they that they might have, and how that might affect my life. 
Andy, are there any concerns uh, that you have about the future, either therapy or the future of your thyroid cancer? Well, yes. I mean, my understanding is is that I may have to undergo um, a treatment with medication, the kinase medications, and the side effects from those, which I know can, uh, you know, not be that pleasant. Um, uh, I'm, I'm uh, I guess, further radioactive iodine treatment is a possibility, and, and um, I don't quite understand what all that means. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't really know what this will mean for me in terms of my quality of life or life expectancy, that kind of thing. I, 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 uh, I haven't really studied up on that, but right now I'm taking it day by day, and I'm grateful to, to be back to work and to be under the care of very fine physicians and the, uh, with expertise in this area. Thank you, Andy, for those wonderful insights. I think you've really shown that uh, thyroid cancer can be a difficult cancer to treat, and there are still many unanswered questions. As you see, many people don't even know what thyroid cancer is when they're first diagnosed, yet it's a very common cancer. Uh, we at the American Thyroid Association are working in many areas, such as uh, guidelines uh, generation, to help guide other physicians and patient care in this area, as well as supportive research uh, to try to understand how we can better treat these patients, either with surgery, the radioactive iodine, novel therapies, um, and also patient advocacy. So we at the ATA work very hard in many areas uh, to try to improve care and improve lives in patients who have uh, thyroid cancer. Hello, my name is David Cooper. I'm a professor of medicine at Johns Hopkins, and I've been a proud member of the American Thyroid Association for over 30 years. I also served as the president of the ATA in 2006 and 2007. You've just heard a very moving interview of a patient with thyroid cancer who illustrates some of the good things and the bad things about thyroid cancer. It, he illustrates the fact that even though we know a lot about thyroid cancer and there are treatments for thyroid cancer, there are still challenges in the sense of certain treatments that are not yet available for patients like that. We need your help in fostering the ATA's ability to fund research so we can help prevent thyroid cancer and treat thyroid cancer and diagnose thyroid cancer in a better way in the future. Thyroid cancer is one of the most rapidly growing kinds of cancer and in every developed country on earth, thyroid cancer has now become one of the top kinds of thyroid cancer. Why this is, we still do not know, but research into this is also vitally important. Over the last 10 years, the ATA has given over $2 million to fund research, much of which has gone to study various aspects of thyroid cancer. And partners with the ATA, nonprofit organizations, have chipped in another $1.5 million. So in total, almost $4 million has been uh, distributed to researchers all, all over the world to help fund research on thyroid cancer. Some of the money has also gone to fund clinical practice guidelines related to thyroid cancer. Clinical practice guidelines are documents that are written by experts of the American Thyroid Association, which go over the proper way to diagnose and treat thyroid cancer in its many aspects. And these guidelines uh, are among the most sought after references for clinicians who want to learn more about how to best treat thyroid cancer for their patients. The ATA has published guidelines on the management of differentiated thyroid cancer, like Mr. Dibovoice has, on medullary thyroid cancer, on anaplastic thyroid cancer, and most recently, a guideline was published on pediatric thyroid cancer. We need your support for these activities, and I hope that you'll consider donating to the American Thyroid Association through the website, through the mail, or by phone. Thank you very much.